Hello everybody, I'm Kathy Rigling, Education Coordinator with the Orange Audubon Society and we're pleased to present you how to participate in the City Nature Challenge for 2024 and we're doing this in partnership with the Nature Conservancy of Florida. The City Nature Challenge started back in 2016 as a competition between San Francisco and Los Angeles and um, that year it was a friendly competition to see who could gather the most observations of nature and engage the most people in the event. So that first year there was two cities, over a thousand people participated, there was over 19,000 observations and over 2,500 species were recorded. Now we're going to share with you the updated um, City Nature Challenge and how it's grown. So what is the City Nature Challenge? It's a global bio blitz, meaning counting all the different types of flora fonda found in a particular area. It's community science. It's open source data. So you can go in and you can search and look for things and all over the world. It's definitely an educational opportunity and it's community engagement and definitely involves inclusion. So through the years, up to 2022, and I'll include 2023 in a little bit. Um, it's grown to over 445 cities in 47 countries and over 1.7 million observations, um, over 50,000 species, and over 67,000 observers. Looking back at 2023, for the world, 82,935 observations of nature, over 13,500 species, over 4,635 people uh, identifying things. So the, this is very interesting. So for the world, the person with the most observations did over 3,000, almost 3,050 observations. So they were out there for four days observing a lot of nature. The most species, someone found 667 species. And the most observed species was this tree called the Scots pine. So this is a little map from 2022 of some of the varied um, commonly observed species all around the world. Now in 2022, the common dandelion was the most commonly observed species. It's still up there from last year too. So very interesting to look at all this data, which is still available to you online. So in 2023, as said before, the Scots pine was the most commonly observed species, followed by the common dand dandelion and some other things. Um, here's our first animal, the mallard, over 222 observations of mallard last year. So looking closer to home, if you're watching this from Orange County, uh, we had over 3,000 observations, 943 species, and um, 211 observers. The most observations was, and the most species, same person, he did over 574 observations and over 301 species. The most commonly observed species, no surprise, the American alligator, followed by the anhingas, great blue herons, common gallinus, brown anoles, and the great egret. So how do you participate? This is giving you some background information before. So the first thing is you need an iNaturalist account. So because this um, City Nature Challenge is at the end of April, this is something you should do ahead of time and get used to it and practice. It's so easy, but you definitely need your own account. It's free. Um, it's a great community science project. So you can sign up um, on the website. There is um, a mobile app, which I highly recommend you get, but you do need an account. And then once you're into, you get an account and you're in the mobile app, you want to ex select projects. So it's in different places, whether you have an Android or an iPhone. And on your uh, computer, 
you can see the projects up here. So the project, there's all kinds of projects you can join and it's, you can explore this all you want, but for the City Nature Challenge, you want to type in the search bar, City Nature Challenge 2024. And some of the old City Nature Challenges will come up as well. And then you can see if your county is participating. Now, Orange County, Florida is participating, but uh, even if your city is not participating, you can still do the City Nature Challenge on the global scale. And once you sign up for your, your if you have a city or a county doing it, and ours is a county, you'll get to the home page. And if you sign up for the project, then you'll get all the updates and information. It's a lot of fun to be part of the project. So to participate, you simply have to take photos with your phone. Now you can use your camera, but to me, the phone is a lot easier. Now I will tell you that actually both these photos of mine, I did take with um, my camera, then I uploaded the photo later, but you can certainly take photos with your phone. It's very, very easy. And then if you don't know what you took a picture of, these are on the, your mobile app, the picture will be here and then you click on what did you see if you click on it it's going to generate some suggestions and if you're not sure pick the top one or pick the one that looks the most close to you it's fine if you're wrong that's the whole beauty of iNaturalist you have a lot of people that have expertise in different fields and they're more than happy to provide an ID for you Okay, and then you just submit your observation. And even if it's wrong, it's fine. And here's where you submit, it'll say share or submit, okay? Now, later on, you will get an email and it'll say, you know, there was activity on your iNaturalist account and you can look to see what people suggested the ID would be. Now, here's some common questions about doing the City Nature Challenge. When can you start making observations? For this year, you can start making observations on April 26 at 12 a.m. your local time, and you can continue making observations until April 29th at 11.59 p.m. your local time, and those will all count. Can you upload photos that you took prior to the City Nature Challenge? No, you have to take your photos between April 26th and April 29th. Do you need to join the project and add your observations for them to be included? No, all the observations you made within the boundary of your project. So if you're doing Orange County, Florida, as long as you took them in Orange County, Florida, they'll be part of the project, which is great. But if you join the project, you'll get notification and news and your, um, it'll be listed on your mobile device as well. So what if you wanna use your real camera? Because, you know, taking photos like of mammals and birds is kind of hard to do it on your phone often. So on the website, there's a, when you go to the website and you go to the home page, you can see where you can add observations. And of course you have your pictures downloaded to your computer and you just choose your files. And when you choose it, if you don't know what species you had, then you click on this species name and it'll generate just like the, the app, it'll generate suggestions and then you can select the one you think it might be. You also have to include a location. So you'll see where it has a map and you can type in. So like I knew I took that picture at Mead Botanical Gardens. So I typed in Mead Botanical Gardens and it, it showed it the location and I just hit update and then it had the location. Now when you do it on your mobile app, it automatically has your location. So this shows you I had this picture of this this warbler here and I clicked on species names and this is what it suggested. I said, oh yeah, it's a Cape May warbler. So I clicked on Cape May warbler and then I just hit the submit and it went in. And it automatically, because your camera has the date, as long as it's correct, it'll have the date. But if your camera date's incorrect, you can fix it. And then it'll show up here. And notice, see, these were some of my observations. Notice it says needs ID, because at the time I submitted this, no one had looked at it. So there are people that help out by 
looking at people's observations. And if it's been looked at, then it gets this change to a research grade. So here's a really cool thing. There's another app called Seek that was really made for children, but actually I know a lot of adults that use it. Um, and Seek works with iNaturalist. So if you want to use Seek, the difference in Seek, Seek will actually try to give you an ID. It doesn't always work. But if you want to use Seek to do the City Nature Challenge, you have to have an iNaturalist account and you have to link them together. And so when you go into the app, you can click on iNaturalist and you can get them synced together. And then when you do an observation on Seek, so like this is one that I did, and it has this post to iNaturalist, as long as you synced it, then it goes in and then it becomes part of the project. So um, I recommend if you're working with younger children that maybe you might want to use the Seek app because it has a more um, timely like identification, you know, it will identify it for you most likely. And if it does it, then you can tell your students, okay, we're going to put it into iNaturalist directly and then we'll see if we can get an ID and they can find out later what it was. So here's important dates, April 26th through the 29th. Take your photos, share observations. Now, between April 30th and May 5th, you can upload your pictures. You can't make new observations, but you can upload any pictures that you took by 9 a.m. local time. May 6th, the City Nature Challenge results are announced, and they're announced through, you can go on a naturalist, you can see it there. So be sure to visit the website www.citynaturechallenge.org and if you're an educator there's this wonderful education toolkit be sure you look at that and they actually have resources for different ages all the way to higher education and general public and here's an example if you're looking for k2 you know this was just a little bit of the activities they have actual activities you can do to tie this in and it's you can tie these into your science standards very easily and it's a great thing the kids will be involved they'll be excited and they're going to start noticing the plants the insects the birds the reptiles everything around your schoolyard there are some more training sessions available that go a little deeper into the city nature challenge if you go to the website and you click on events you can see some upcoming webinars Here's the website again. There is a training video that was produced um, in California that goes a little deeper into the ins and outs and like how to post things. And there's the toolkit. Thank you for participating in the training and a certificate of participation is available upon request if you email me and just um, I'll give you instructions on how to get that certificate. So thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful time using uh, iNaturalist with your students. They're gonna become so excited to go out and observe nature and participate in City Nature Challenge. So I hope everyone has a great night and thank you for coming and enjoying our program. Thank you very much.